Microphones can be an incredibly valuable tool for native flute players. They can help you hear the sound of your own flute, maybe for the first time. We're not in such a good position to hear this instrument compared to the microphone. Microphone also gives you an honest listen to how other people hear your music. You can also use it to practice uh, playing over backing tracks, uh, so you can get used to playing with rhythm, playing with other people. Um, and at some point, somebody's going to ask you to play for other people, probably on the stage, and they're going to put a mic in front of you. And if you had some experience with it, all the better. Down the road, you might also want to record. And in the recording studio, my microphone is, it becomes part of your instrument. So this flute cast is about everything I could think of on how to use a microphone uh, with Native American flutes. First thing to pay attention to is which side of the microphone you're playing to. I'm going to turn it around and point out the logo, the Auto Technica. That's usually, on almost all mics, it's what's called the address side of the microphone. And now I'm talking into the back side of the microphone. You can hear the sound difference. As I rotate it around, I'm going to create some noise, of course. But as I point it back to me, it's substantially louder if I'm addressing the microphone at the address side, because the mic is going to reject sound on the sides and especially reject sound in the back. Now that's not true of all microphones, but most microphones you're going to have uh, are going to have that pattern of uh, accepting sound from the center and rejecting from the sides and really rejecting from the back. There are some microphones that are omnidirectional, which pick up sound from all sides, but that's not typical. Uh, when you're playing to the mic, you want your flute at the address side of the microphone and you want to reject the conga player over on the other side of the stage because uh, he or she is going to have their own microphone. So I'm going to play a note and I'm going to rotate the mic and we're going to see what the difference in the sound is. Here we go. Big breath. What that's going to mean is that in addition to being on the address side of the microphone, you also want to stay on center. There's a fairly narrow, maybe a 90 degree arc, 45 degrees each side, where the mic is really going to pick up your sound. So you want to stay in center. If you move off center, it's going to affect your sound. Next thing to be aware of is your distance from the mic. Got it about six inches for starters here. Let's see what happens. Distance from the mic is really, really important. Some players get on stage and almost like you're afraid of the mic, and they're three feet away from the mic, and that's not going to work very well, because in addition to the, the weak sound of the flute, you're going to pick up everything else that's happening in the room. So you want to allow the sound engineer, who's doing the mixing, to give as strong as possible a signal and be reasonably close to the microphone. It's called close miking, and it works well on a lot of flutes. So distance from the mic is really important. You want to be aware of your distance from the mic, and you can also use it as part of your tool. If you play louder, watch singers. They're going to get very close to the mic when they're being quiet, and they're going to move away from the mic when they're loud. So it balances, it self-balances out the sound. You can use that. If you go up to the high notes, maybe move further away, get in close for the low notes, because they tend to have less sound volume. So now we've got a two mic setup, one pointed directly at the sound hole and one just off the end of the flute. Let's hear the difference in volume and also li listen for a difference in uh, quality of the sound.
here I've moved the mic from the foot up to right over the finger holes, and I've still got the uh, sound hole mic going. Let's again compare volume and quality of sound. <laughs> So we've looked at just three of the many different microphone positions you can use. Um, my personal preference is uh, very close to the sound hole up here. For me, I think the sound is uh, louder and it produces, if you're just going to have one mic, the best sound. Uh, there's a lot of other locations. Uh, Coyote Oldman has actually experimented with putting mics up inside the bore of the flute. And um, one of the best things you can do in a recording studio setup is kind of, I like a, a position like this where you have two microphones, one over the finger holes and one near the sound hole, and then during mixing you can choose which or actually mix the two together to get the best sound that you like. One of the things you're going to have at the finger holes is you're going to pick up that finger hole sound happening down here. You might like not like that or you might like it. Uh, there are recordings that use that sound. Now I'd like to introduce the windscreen. It can really help uh, if you're playing outside in the wind. It also blocks uh, the, the air produced by the flute itself. And it goes right over the microphone. Um, you've got to be careful because it's actually going to hide the logo and it can make it a little difficult to tell which side is the address side of the microphone. But we're going to compare uh, wind sounds with with and without So it does provide some protection um, There's also the uh, pop filter uh, it, per it performs a similar function, but it helps with plosives like the letter P And singers use it a lot. You'll see them uh, playing uh, right behind it. So that's a, another handy tool for microphone work. So now we've got a world record attempt for the maximum number of microphones recording a single phrase on a Native American flute. You're going to hear this phrase on each of these seven microphones. The first three are called condenser mics. They are more sensitive. They react very quickly to the sound. Um, they're often recommended for studio use. And the last four are dynamic mics. Uh, dynamic mics are often recommended for uh, live performances. Uh, they're not as sensitive. They don't produce as much output. They have to be amplified a little bit more. And they actually respond a little bit slower. But they're great for live settings because they don't tend to feed back, whereas condenser mics tend to have feedback in live settings. Condenser mics also need power to be applied to them, something called phantom power. And uh, you need to be aware of that if you're using a condenser mic. So they're often used in studio situations. Here we go. Oh, let me tell you what the mics are. Okay. The first one is a um, Audio-Technica AT2035. It's called a large diaphragm condenser. The membrane that picks it up is, uh, is quite large. It's often uh, used as a vocal microphone uh, in studio settings. Uh, then we have a, an AKG C1000S, which is a medium diaphragm condenser, and a small diaphragm condenser mic, an Octava MK12. Um, the fourth mic is a classic uh, dynamic mic for instruments. Uh, it's an SM57. Um, we also have a, a vocal mic. This is an AKG D750. It's very similar to the Shure SM58, which you'll often see uh, vocalists singing into on stage. Then we have a, a classic mic. This is a Shure Unidyne 556S from uh, produced somewhere between 1951 and 1981. Uh, very, very a uh, classic old mic and a very specific drum mic, an Audix D2 mic, um, often used in drum situations. So, single phrase on a Native American flute on seven different microphones.
So, what have we learned? This is a wonderful deep listening exercise. Can you hear the difference between the seven mics? If you're listening on a streaming service like YouTube or video, that difference might not even be audible. The cost of these mics range from about $300 down to the AKG D750 that was actually a freebie I got as a giveaway from Sweetwater. It's a pretty large range, and the difference is subtle. What is less subtle for me are the topics earlier in the video, staying on the center of the address side of the mic, the distance from the mic, and what part of the flute the mic is picking up. So maybe the lesson is that the sound we get has less to do with the cost of the mic and more about how we, as musicians, actually make use of the mic. This means that if you need to purchase a mic and you don't yet have a lot of experience, you don't need to break the bank to get started. For performing live sound reinforcement, a basic dynamic mic like the Shure SM57 or SM58 will work great. You can get these for under $100 new, and there's a lot of these mics on the used market if you're on a budget. For recording, a condenser mic will get you better results than the dynamic mic, but remember, large diaphragm condensers are somewhat more pricey, more delicate than dynamic mics, and you'll need to feed them phantom power. Now, one of the things you might have been thinking during the seven mics demo was that the flute sound that you heard didn't really sound like good flute recordings that you've heard. And the reason is, those recordings were dry. No post-processing, no equalization, no digital effects like reverb or echo. We are so used to hearing that post-processing done on flute music that when we hear it dry without post-processing, it doesn't sound right. So let's go back one more time and hear the recording that was done on the freebie mic, the AKG D750, and I'll play that again with equalization and uh, digital effects, reverb. So the difference is dramatic. In later flute casts, we'll do uh, two topics, mixers and digital effects. Those two topics together will give you direct control on the timbre and the quality of your sound. And you might get into this. You might want to go off and play your flute and not really be concerned about sound reinforcement or recording, but some people like to get into this and really um, relish in their direct control over the sound they're producing. One of the things that's really helpful on stage, uh, somebody turned me on to this, is when you step up to the mic, what I always do is I say, this is my mic. And of course, the flute is my flute. Now the mic becomes part of my instrument, and I feel much more at home when I'm playing. So enjoy it, have fun, uh, use microphones to expand your music. And this is the kind of topic, of course, that we put out on YouTube because we're not focused on this in our workshops. Uh, in our workshops, we try to stay in the heart space. Uh, we do use some technology in our workshops. We do amplify people's sounds. Uh, we give people the experience of hearing your sounds through amplification. Uh, we hear, give the experience of uh, people recording and hearing yourself, hearing the sound of your own flute. That's the kind of things we do. We don't focus so much on the technology. So this is uh, offered as a, a little uh, bit of information that might help you in your music. And as always, we would love to have you join us at a workshop. And now I've lost my windscreen. Oh, it's on the mic. Okay, we are together. Okay. <laughs>